Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is Pastor Ford with the Word Church, that is Canaan Missionary Baptist Church, also known as the Word Church in Mesa, Arizona. Welcome to worship. And more than that, in addition to that, welcome to a special first Sunday worship in the month of September 2020. We are so glad that you are here, and we want to ask you to do this favor for me now. Do this favor for me now. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Would you immediately click share on whatever device you're watching on? If you're watching on Facebook Live, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on the church live stream, would you share this right now as we prepare to get going? And would you invite all of your friends, relatives, associates, and neighbors to join us on this first Sunday worship? So again, brothers and sisters, welcome to First Sunday Worship in September 2020. We want to begin this morning with a word of prayer. So wherever you are, would you stand with me now? Would you stand with myself and with uh, the deacons from our church this morning on this month, this first Sunday, we welcome Deacon Clarence Three immediately in front of me, and then to your right, uh, Deacon Charlene Godot, and then to your left, Deacon Francine Barrow. We're going to pray together as we start worship, and then we're going to move forward right on with communion. And so as we prepare to pray, I know church members, you know that today is first Sunday, and so it's time for us to worship with communion. If you are not a member of our church, uh, would you prepare, would you go gather right now the bread and the cup that you are going to utilize for communion? We're going to pray, and then we'll go right into our time together as we worship God with communion. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear Heavenly Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. God, your courts with praise. Father, we are grateful to you, and Lord, we bless your name, for you are good. Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures to every generation. God, we thank you afresh for this day. And Father, we praise you, not just for the day, but this first Sunday. God, what a special Sunday this is for all of us as we remember in a special way the cross of Calvary and our Lord Jesus Christ hanging on that cross, giving up his life that we might have a right to the tree of life. So Father, right now, would you prepare our hearts and our minds, not only for worship, but for communion. Father, in keeping with the book of Corinthians and chapter 11, Father, where we are instructed to gather together for Holy Communion, but Father, also to make sure that our hearts are right, first with our brother and sister, God, and then with you. So, Father, for all ought, any ought that we have in our heart against another person, we come to you right now. We confess whatever that is. And, Father, we ask you to forgive us as we forgive others. And then in this way, prepare us to receive communion aright. Bless this moment. Bless this worship. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, again, welcome to worship. At this time, we're going to participate in Holy Communion. As we prepare to do that, I want to remind all of us that communion is a word in our English that carries the idea of the biblical principle, common union. It is literally all of us coming together in unity to remember the cross of Calvary. We remember the cross in two ways that are primary on Communion Sunday. The first is through the bread, and the scripture tells us that the Lord Jesus gathered with his, with his disciples in a large upper room that was furnished, and there they participated in, they took part in the Passover meal. The Passover meal, brothers and sisters, is symbolized in part by bread, and by wine. And so Jesus issues, he gives out new direction, a new directive. He says to his disciples, I will no longer drink from the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it anew with you in heaven. He takes the bread, he breaks it, and he says, take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner. The Bible says after supper, he took the cup and he handed the cup. That is to say, he passed it around and he told each of them to sip from the cup, take a drink from the cup. Jesus said this cup, this wine represents a new covenant relationship between you and between me, the Lord Jesus said. Jesus taught that the bread is a symbol of his broken body. The cup 
is a symbol of his shed blood. Brothers and sisters, when we come together on Sundays, first Sunday, to participate in the bread and the cup, get this now, we're symbolically connecting ourselves in remembrance to the broken body of Jesus Christ on Calvary. And today, Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, magnify the Lord with you. Yeah. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Can you do all that you can please stand to your feet? We're going to read our scripture this morning before our praise and worship team comes and we'll have prayer. The scripture this morning is coming from Psalms 24, starting at verse 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Let us clap our hands and give God praise. We came to lift up the name of God today. We came to lift up Jesus today. So God, we magnify your name today. We glorify you, Lord. We lift you up, God. We thank you, God, for being our King of glory. We thank you, God, for being our Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, God, for being our Jehovah Nisi. Lord, we thank you for being our Jehovah Shalom. God, we need you this day. So God, come into this worship service, Lord. Have your way in this place, God. Have your way in this place, God. Move every distraction, Lord. Move every spirit that's not like you, God. Lord, come in and let your Shekinah glory fill this place. Lord, we need you today, God. Lord, we come, Lord, to see you today, God. Lord, less of us and more of you, God. Have your way. Increase us, Lord. Increase in us our praise today, Lord. Increase in us our worship today, Lord. Set our hearts on fire, God. For we cannot make it in this place without you, God. And we need you this hour, this very second, this very day, God. So, God, we give you all the praise. God, we give you all the praise. God, we give you all the praise. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We shout hallelujah for your worthy God to be praised. God, we call all these things done in your most powerful name, Jesus. Amen and amen.
more I want to love you more than before No more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Come on, sing with me. Say no more shackles. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Let's try that again. Say no more shackles, no more chains. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. If you yeah. believe you sing with me, hallelujah, 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 No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. I hear you, Anthony. Come on, let's go. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Let's try that one more time. Saying no more shackles, no more chains. No more bondage, I am free, yeah. Let's lift them up and sing with me. Hallelujah, 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 we thank you for your freedom, 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 freedom. We thank you for your freedom, freedom, freedom. Let's lift them up. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Give out a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. God is so good. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. We give our worship to him. For you, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all of the things you've done for me. No one can worship you for me. Hallelujah. Amen. It's my worship. Amen. We're going to sing yes. it together. Yes. Thank you.
Jesus. Praise the name of our God. Well, once again, we just like to give God praise for a wonderful day. And saints of God, that was pre-recorded. That was pre-COVID. That praise and worship that you just witnessed right now and enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed it in the name of the Lord. This is always an opportunity to give God praise. As long as you are breathing, as long as you're on this side of heaven right now, that is an awesome, awesome time to give our God glory. Amen. It is worship time in another form. This is offering time, saints of God. This is offering time. We are in a season of uncertainty. We don't know who our leaders will be soon in November. We don't know what's going on as it pertains to our jobs, certain situations in our family. But once again, this is a great opportunity. No matter what is going on in your life, put in God first. Right now you have on the screen three different ways to give. And saints of God, we'd like to say thank you for those that have been supporting this ministry, for supporting the work of God. We'd just like to say one big God bless you and thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for stretching out in faith. Amen. So also, one of the ways you can give, you can certainly come by the church office between Monday and Thursday, between nine and two. We just ask that you give us a call so we know that you're coming. Amen. And also, you can mail a check if that's what you chose to do, or if you have not downloaded the church app, we are staying connected with one another in that church app. So connect with that church app. You can give that way as well. Amen. So let's pray. And let's just put God first in everything that we do in the name of the Lord and watch God move in your life. Father, we thank you. God, we give you all the praise. God, we give you all the glory. God, we give you all the honor. Father, because you are worthy. We worship you, God. We bow down to you. And God, we receive your will for our lives. Father, I thank you right now for each and every one under the sound of my voice. Lord, we are preparing our hearts to give back to you that a portion of what you've given unto us. God, we can never repay for all the goodness, for all the grace and all the mercy and all the love you have given unto us. But in these uncertain times, God, we are certain that your word is true. God, you are a rock. And we thank you, Father. Thank you for what you've done, God. Thank you for our future. Thank you for our lives. That's our expression to you, Father. This gift that we give unto you. So, Father, I'm asking God that you continue to bless this offering. Bless us, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God. No matter what is going on around us, strengthen us to put you first in every area. God, we do it out of love. Love for you. And I pray, Lord, that our love grows for you in the name of the Lord. Father, we give you all the praise. God, we give you all the glory. God, we give you all the honor because you are worthy. Bless us, Father, in Jesus' name. Well, saints of God, once again, we'd like to thank you for joining this broadcast. And, then, and don't forget, right after this broadcast, we have conversations. And not only do we have certain conversations, but we have Sunday school. Don't forget Sunday school in the name of the Lord. Amen. We break word in another way. Amen. But now let's go a little bit further, a little bit higher, and another pre-recorded. Maybe we got the choir coming up. Check them out. Join them. We love you in the Lord. Let's go higher in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on.
Come on now, I'm sold out. My mind. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, tell them. Come on, y'all, I'm sold out. Come on, tell them. My mind. can separate not death nor life cause Jesus come on now I'm sold out come on I'm sold out my mind come on let's go to the verse now I've come through the fire But God, He's come on, my mind. Come on now, come on now. I'm sold out. 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 Come on, choir, tell them what are we? Come on now, I'm sold out. I'm sold out. Come on now, tell them I'm sold out. My heart is fixed. No room, no victory. His spirit lives. Say yeah. My heart is fixed. No room, no vacancy.
Well, God bless you, brothers and sisters. We thank and praise God for our time of prayer and our time of praise. And now it's time for the preaching of the gospel. Would you please, brothers and sisters, where you are, would you gather your copy of God's word and then join me as we prepare to read from God's word uh, from the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 7. Uh, join us, uh, if you will, please, ma'am, please, sir. It is our custom and our habit to do what the saints are doing here in our sanctuary, all five of us in this sanctuary. Here is what we're doing. Uh, we are standing in honor of the author of the word. And so people say, Pastor, why do you stand when the word of God is being proclaimed? Here's why we stand. We stand simply because it's worth standing on. It's a statement of faith. And so we say we stand by faith and we ought to stand in honor of the author who was God who wrote the word. And so that's why we stand as we read God's word together. Nehemiah chapter 7, we're continuing our series in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 7, I'm going to read in your hearing this morning uh, just two verses. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 7, the first three verses. Read from the King James Version like this. Then it was, when the wall was built and I had hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, that I gave the charge of Jerusalem to my brother Hananiah and Hananiah, the leader of the citadel. For he was a faithful man and feared God more than many. And I said to them, do not let the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun is hot. And while they stand guard, let them shut and bar the doors and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, one at his watch station and another in front of his house. May the Lord be pleased with the hearing, reading, understanding, living out of his words. You may be seated. Join me, brothers and sisters, if you would, in a word of prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Be pleased, our Heavenly Father, again to let us preach. God, not for shape, nor for show, nor for fashion, but God, let us preach till we reach each age. Father, we thank you afresh for all that our eyes have seen, our ears heard, and our hearts felt. And Father, I pray now afresh, and God, I join my faith and my prayers with these who are uh, partnering in worship and in this moment of preaching, that Father, would you please remove every distraction, allow the seed of your word to find good soil in our hearts, God, then produce much fruit is our prayer. Father, this morning, would you save? Would you heal? Would you strengthen? Would you deliver? Would you set free? In the name that is above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray it and we say thank you. Amen. Have you ever been in a place, a period, a time of testing and trial and temptation where you had to guard, watch this now, not just your home but your heart? Not just your home and your heart, but your head. Not just your home, your heart, and your head, but in order to get out of the place you were in, you had to use your hands. Brothers and sisters, if that's you this morning, you have come to the right worship service at the right time. You're here at the right moment because today, by the help of the Holy Spirit, with aid of God's word, watch this now, our goal this morning is to deal with exactly where we are today and hear what God has to say to us about how we can get out of rough situations, how we can be delivered from tough times, how we can be uh, people who exit those extemporaneous, extemporaneous circumstances that seek to have us locked in and locked up and sometimes locked out. Here we go. I don't know if you remember this or not, but Many of you will recall this, watch this now. You'll recall in years gone by that old song that was originally sang by the Carpenters. I know I lost you on the Carpenters. The Carpenters are a group, Dick and Charlene McClellan will tell you from way back in the day, it was a brother and a sister, and they sang what we might today call folk music. 
They sang a song that you're familiar with. I know you don't know the Carpenters, but I promise you, most of you will know this song. Why do I know that? Why am I confident? Here's why. The song was picked up, old song, don't miss that, was picked up by a contemporary artist. Please catch that. Understand this, that everything that's old is not old to be thrown away. Some things that are old were good back then, and they're also good right now. This old song originally sang by the Carpenters, that brother and sister duo, is now picked up in contemporary days, watch this now, by a modern day rhythm and blues singer. We would call him back in the day a soul singer. You don't know the Carpenters, but you do know the name Luther Vandross. Oh yeah, I figured you would. You know the name Luther Vandross. Luther Vandross, that crooner who's a captain of crooning, that man who knows how to sing soulfully and yet sultry in a way that is almost seductive if you're not careful. Luther Vandross, watch this now, picks up an old carpenter song and here's the language and the lyric to the song. He's making an argument about a war that's going on in a home. He's making a case about a war or a battle that's happening among brotherhood, our, our sisterhood, or a husband and a wife or a boyfriend and a girlfriend, here's what he says in his song, sing Luther Vandross, sing uh, Karen Carpenter, here's what he says, he says a chair <laughs> is still a chair, even when there's no one sitting there, but oh, a chair is not a house, and a house is not a home, argue Luther when the two of us are far apart, and just one of us has a broken heart. He goes on to beg and to plead with the one to whom the man in this song is singing to. And watch his pleading, watch his begging, almost in a Keith set, Sweat way. He says, pretty little darling, have a heart. Don't let one mistake keep us apart. Argue Luther. He says, I'm not meant to live alone. Would you please turn this house into a home? That's the argument. That's the opening introduction. Whatever else is going on in the book of Nehemiah, here it is. God has prepared for all of us a home. And contextually, in the book of Nehemiah, the nation of Israel that God created out of a promise he made to really originally to Adam and to Eve and then to Abraham, beginning in Genesis ch chapter 12. And then on and on through the years, watch this, God out of the loins of Abraham creates a nation called, watch this, Jacob. No, God changes Jacob's name. You remember this Bible readers to what Israel, the nation of Israel is born. God promises to give them a promised land. God gives them a land flowing with milk and honey. And God says this to them as he says to us today, as long as you follow my lead, as long as you follow my commands, as long as you do, Sherman, what uh, I tell you to do, I'm going to take care of you. Deacon Clarence Three, Deacon Francine Barrow, Deacon Charles Lincoln Doe, Reverend Michael Samuel, Reverend Kevin Heaven swindle. Isn't it just like all of us to obey while everything's going smooth? But sometimes, even in smooth selling days, even in sunny weather moments, we can get distracted by that which is dastardly. No, that which is the devil. We can get distracted by that which is dastardly and that which is the devil. Oh, yes, we can, brothers and sisters. We can get distracted in great ways. How does this happen? It happens like this when the devil comes along and he seeks to get us off track by seducing us in unforeseen ways. You know how it happens. We're just walking down the alley, we're going down the street, we're minding our own business, and all of a sudden, Reverend Kevin Swindle, all of a sudden, Reverend Michael Samuel, all of a sudden, watch what happens at the door. Watch what happens at the door, brothers and sisters. All of a sudden, here's what happens. We're going down the street, and then there is a door of opportunity that the devil takes for you and I, watch this now, to be duped and to be a seduced. Can you see the nation of Israel? They're obeying God, Mike. Can you see the nation of Israel? They're obeying God, Deacon Clarence Three. Can you see the nation of Israel? They're obeying God in the lobby, mate. Can you see the nation of Israel? They're obeying God. Now watch what happens, brothers and sisters. Watch what happens uh, in the nation of Israel. Here's what they're doing. They are following God. And then all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, the devil comes and tempts them in great ways. They fall. They fall by the wayside. The devil tempts them, and they fall by the wayside. 
Whenever they fall out of faith with God, they fall down into sin. When they fall down into sin, it's because God has sent judgment. God sends judgment because they no longer are obeying the commands and the edicts and the direction of God. And brothers and sisters, catch this now real quick on your way to heaven. Understand this, that as long as we're under the covering of God, then we have uh, all protection. But when we leave outside of the covering of God and when we disobey the word of God, we make ourselves, watch this now, open game for the devil and his demons. Brothers and sisters, get that. That ain't hard to get. Anybody here beside me ever left the home of your mother and your father or the aunt or the uncle or big mama and, 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 and papa who was taking care of you only to go out into the world and find out all of a sudden that you no longer had the covering and the protection and the resources that belong to those who are at a higher level. Brothers and sisters, whenever we get away from God, our protection from God can go uh, 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 right along with us getting away from God. You don't believe. Come here, Luke 15. Y'all do remember the prodigal son, don't you? You do remember that the Bible says in Luke 15 that there was a father who had two sons and that the younger son comes to that father. What does he do? He says, Father, give to me uh, the substance uh, you know, of goods that follow to me. This young son, not the older son, son thinking three, the younger son says to his father, Father, give me. Watch the language. Uh, uh, he commands his father, give me. I want my inheritance now. You're not dead yet, but I want to live right now. Imagine the, the, the hubris, the arrogance, the audaciousness of not the older son but the younger son saying to the father I want what I uh, what I have coming to me right now the father could have blessed him out but he didn't <laughs> the father could have cursed him out but he didn't uh, the father could have told him heck no but he didn't the Bible says that the father divided unto them his living that is to say he gave them permission watch this now to get what they had at the moment watch this brothers and sisters even though he was not yet deceased now that older son y'all remember this in Luke 15 he was hot as molasses I mean hot as fish grace he was mad at his younger brother because he knew several things one thing that the older son knew that all of us need to pay attention to is number one God's law is God's law for a reason and God's law says that you wait until the father has gone on to the other side before you benefit from the blessings and the bounty that he has been uh, blessed by God to amass over his lifetime. Number two, he recognized this. Not only is God's law in place, that the loot he was going to receive is lessened, the older son, because of the arrogance and the ignorance and the insolence of the younger son. Pastor Ford, what do you mean? Had he waited a little longer, maybe his father would have lived another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years what does that mean that means that his resources would have grown exponentially that means had you waited a little bit longer you would have got more than you would have gotten at that moment a lot of us only want to live in the right now and not be uh people who take advantage of the not yet that boy that boy that boy messed himself up and then he messed his older brother up the nation of israel brothers and sisters watch this now when they get out of step with god the book of Nehemiah is tailored to teach us several things, and one of those things is this, is that when they got out of the will of God, they became uh, slaves to other nations. That may not seem to make sense to you right now, but brothers and sisters, watch this now. God is sovereign, and he's always loving Israel. Watch the application. God is sovereign, and he's always loving us. God is always in control. He doesn't abandon his children. God is in control right now in 2020. He has not abandoned his children, but God will allow foreign people and foreign nations and foreign ideas to temporarily take control to teach us a lesson. Oops, I think I just said something. God will allow someone in the White House or someone in the Senate or someone in the palace are someone in another place to temporarily take over in order that we might, uh, watch this now, experience the recompense of our mistakes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. You've heard this term before. You lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. You've heard the language, brothers and sisters, that you can do what you want to do, but if you go out there and you lay down with some dogs, you might wake up with some fleas. Sin has consequences. Could it be that right now God is upset with the church? 
the believer, the Christian, because we have left our place and our position close to him and we prefer the world. Just could it be, just consider it. Is it possible that God has allowed foreign ideas and foreign faith and foreign people, kings or princes or presidents or other personalities to come in and now we're experiencing, could it be the consequence of our own decision to not follow God. So what do we see in Nehemiah? We see war. You remember that's how it starts. What do we see in Nehemiah? We see wisdom because Nehemiah, watch this now, in the book records the history of Israel and they're now under the oppression of a foreign people, but yet in the midst of war, God gives wisdom. What is God's wisdom? God gives wisdom that warms the nation while Nehemiah is a prisoner. You remember this? He's cut bare to the king, Clarence 3. While Nehemiah is a prisoner, y'all remember this? He's not only cut bare to the king, but he's manager of over, he, he's over the entire household of the king. While Nehemiah is a prisoner, you're going to shout in a moment, he's not only cut bare, not only house manager, but he lives on the premises in the palace in a private crib. While Nehemiah, you're going to shout in a moment, is incarcerated. He's a slave. He is cupbearer to the king. He's house manager. He has a private residence. He sees the king every day. He's the king's cupbearer. What does that mean? Every time the king got ready to eat, there's Nene. There's Nehemiah. He has to taste the cup and, and, and also taste the food prior to the king eating it. Why? So that if there was a foreign enemy who was trying to watch this now hurt or harm or poison the king, the cupbearer would die first. What a job. I understand. What a job. But get this. He had perks. He had position. He had prominence. And he had resources because God placed Nehemiah in the king's house and God placed him there for a reason. There's war that leads to Nehemiah being in the king's house. There is, watch this now, wisdom because God knows what he's up to. Even in the midst of our hurt, our harm, our calamity, our chaos, our God is still king. And he can position us on the checkerboard square. He can position us, or watch this now, on the chessboard. He can position us that even while we are so-called incarcerated, we can at the same time be liberated as long as we place our trust in the God of the Bible. Nehemiah is there. There's war. You remember this. Watch this. There's wisdom because God places him where he wants him even in the midst of this war-like situation. But then there's walls. You remember this, that the Bible tells us that Nehemiah, watch it again, he is positioned by God to begin to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, not just begin, but to complete it. Are there any walls in your life that you need rebuilt? Are there any walls that are now crumbling? Any walls that are now, they, they used to be six foot, now they're just pieces of, of just broken uh, brick or broken stone or broken clay. They're just rubble. Thank you, Reverend Samuel, on the ground. Is it possible that your walls can be rebuilt? Here's my application for you today. Your walls can be rebuilt and your walls will be rebuilt as long as you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God puts it in Nehemiah's heart. Go back! And I want you to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. What kind of wall do you need to rebuild? A wall of love? What kind of wall do you need to rebuild? A wall of hope? What kind of wall do you need to rebuild? A wall of health? What kind of wall do you need to rebuild? A wall of, watch this, holiness? What kind of wall do you need to rebuild? A wall of faith? What kind of wall do you need to rebuild with people? Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your in-law who is now an outlaw? What kind of law, wall do you need to rebuild? God can use us to rebuild walls. The walls of the city that have been torn down. There's war. There's wisdom. There's walls. Watch this now. Then there's a work. <laughs> See, brothers, watch this now. Sisters, watch this now. Dick and Charlie and Godot will tell you, you can't get anything worth anything without putting in some work. You can't get anything worth anything without putting in some work. Brother, quit going after that girl who's always saying yes to you every single time the first time. I'm going to leave that right there. Because if there's no work there, she may not be worth much for you. Uh, sister, leave that brother alone. Who every time you come to him, he's just Johnny on the spot. He will do anything good, bad, or indifferent. There we go. Not Johnny on the spot. But Clarence, good, bad, or indifferent, Reverend Samuel. Anybody who will do anything you want, whenever you want them to do it, whether it's legal or illegal, leave them alone. 
They may be the wrong person to build a wall with. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, watch this now. There's war, there's wisdom, there's walls. All of us have walls and wars. And watch this now. We need the wisdom of God, and then we got to put in the work. You remember what happened already in the book of Nehemiah. The Bible says that Nehemiah gets permission from the king. He goes to uh, uh, his homeland. Remember now, the kingdom is divided. There's Judah. Remember that. And then there is Jerusalem. You remember this. Now, watch this now. Watch this. When he arrives, the walls are torn down. He tells everybody, we got to put in some work. You can't get nothing in this life without work. <laughs> Sweat equity goes a long way. They begin to rebuild the walls. And watch what Nehemiah does. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm trying to get to chapter 7. Watch what happens. He says this to them. He says, I need everybody to build the walls in this fashion. Nehemiah, a layman, says the first ones I'm going to assign to build a wall are the priests. And he assigns them to the sheep gate. You remember that last week. And then he assigns others to this area and this area and this area. Why are walls so important? Because, brothers and sisters, remember this is in the Old Testament. Remember now, this is during a time where cities were spoken to are seen uh, as separated in terms of their strength, whether uh, they had a wall or they did not. You could not exist and be a strong civilization, a strong community in this day, and, uh, unless your city was fortified or had a wall around it. Because if you didn't have a wall, enemies could come in at any time, any point, any place, and they could hurt or harm, they could kill, they could slaughter. And so you needed a wall of protection around you. Nehemiah says, brothers, hey, sisters, we got to build a wall so that we can be protected from the enemy. That might be our problem, is that we have no protection from the enemy because we have no wall. So he assigns priests, you build the wall by the sheep gate. Others, you build the wall by the dung gate. Someone else, you build the wall over here by this gate, by that gate. And, and, and so the Bible says they go to work and they begin to build the wall. And then the Bible says this, that Nehemiah assigned wall building, watch this now, to people who... who, who, who who would be seated and situated and set uh, right in front of their house. That is to say, listen, yes, uh, this six foot by eight foot space, Sherman, yes, that's in front of your house. Guess what I want you to do? What? Build a wall in front of your house. And then your neighbor to your right and your neighbor to your left, they would build their portion of the wall. And everybody's wall would connect. And so if everybody, watch the application, would build the section of the wall, watch the application, in front of the house where you domicile, watch the application, and then connect it to your neighbor's house and connect it to your neighbor's house and connect it to your neighbor's house, eventually a whole wall all around the city goes up. Everyone is protected, but everyone is doing their part. Everybody has a part to play, even if it's just building the wall in front of your house. I know we don't like that no more. We like easy stuff. We like getting something for free. We want an app that'll give us a free Starbucks coffee. We want an app that'll give us a free sandwich at the local restaurant. We want an app that will give us a free this and a free that. But God tells us that we have to be responsible for some things. And brothers and sisters, please hear what I'm saying. Sometimes we just need to build a wall in front of our own I'm in the middle. I got a house. My wall is built. Clarence is to my right. He has a house, and his wall is built. Uh, 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 li listen, Michael is to my left. He has a house, and, and, and in front of him, that wall is built, and it's all connected. We have to do our part in order to receive the benefits that God has for us. Watch this now. Watch the war. Watch the wisdom. Watch the walls. Watch the work. And I'm going to close on this now. Watch the worship. In chapter 7, I did all that trying to get chapter 7. Watch, watch what happens. The Bible says that Nehemiah calls his brother Hanani and his other companion Hananiah. Hananiah, his biological brother. And then Hananiah, watch what he does. He, after the walls are built. Remember last week, the wall is completed in 52 days. Why? Because the people had a mind to work. Watch this now. Nobody's mad at nobody else. They're working in concert. Yes, we're not uh, um, forgetting about Sanballat and Tobiah. Those who come up in the midst of our building project and try to fight against us. While we're doing God's work, there will always be someone in your family or someone in your faith fellowship or someone on your job or someone somewhere that will tell you, 
all negative news. Yeah, you got a job, but it ain't a good one. Yeah, you got a car, but it's a putt-putt. Yeah, you got a bike, but it's a two-wheel and it's tore back. Yeah, you got some clothes, but they're not designed to clothes. Understand this, that brothers and sisters, there's always going to be a naysayer. The devil would not be alive and well if there was not a naysayer, but put your head down. Keep your eyes toward the prize. Keep your hands on the work, and the Bible promises us that no Tobiah and no Sanballat, those are the two who are coming against Nehemiah, no matter what they say, no matter what they speak, no matter what they tweet, no matter what they text, no matter what they put on Facebook, no matter what it is they put out in the gossip world, understand this, with God on your side, you can do anything but fail. <laughs> they work together. And that's how we're going to do this. That's how we're going to get out of this COVID crisis. And I ain't talking about no pandemic. I'm talking about sin. That's how we're going to do this. Get out of this COVID pandemic. And I ain't talking about a pandemic. I'm talking about getting out of debt individually. Uh, every member of our church, our church collectively. I'm talking about, listen, we got to do it together. The Bible says this. The Bible says this. As it relates to chapter 7, here's what happens. Here comes Hananiah. Here comes Hananiah. Brothers and sisters, watch what happens in this passage. This text is tailored to teach us this truth, that after the wall is built, after it's built in only 52 days. Can you imagine how long that would have taken to build if just 10% of people were working or 30% of people were working? No, everybody's doing their part. The Bible says then Nehemiah, he appoints people to be persons in servant leadership. You know what the church is lacking? We're lacking servant leaders who love the Lord first and who are willing to serve others second. That's what we're lacking. We got too many chiefs and not enough. Come on now, Sean. <laughs> Everybody want to be boss hog and nobody wants to be a servant. Jesus told us that if we're going to follow him, we have to learn how to be servant of all. That is servant to all. Jesus said he came Watch this now, to seek and to save those who are lost. And he did it through serving and serving literally up himself on a platter called the cross that all of us might be saved. I'm through now, brothers and sisters. I promise you I'm through. But now catch this. Catch this. What he does is he restores worship in the temple. After the work is done and after the war has been identified and after the wisdom has been dispensed and after the wall has been erected, uh, you know what Nehemiah does? He says, it's time to worship. <sighs> you ever had a great achievement like Michael and like Clarence and like Charlene? Have you, have, you, have you ever paid off all your bills like they have? Have you ever paid off all three or four of your houses like they have? Have you ever paid off every car like they have? Have you ever done that? Or, 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 even if you're like Kevin and I and you're still working on it. <laughs> Brothers and sp brother, sisters, get this. At some point, Nehemiah says, God is faithful. The city is safe. Now, let's get to work. No, Nehemiah, let's get to worship. He returns the priests back to the temple. Everybody's in place. There is a multi-voice choir, and they worship God for the things he has done. Here's what I want to close with. It, it, it is possible that worship precedes us winning. <laughs> that if you really want to win, you got to learn how to worship. If you really, watch this now, want to experience victory, you got to learn how to go down on your knees in worship. Because worship, whatever else it is, it's worship. It is you and I going down on our knees in war and standing up on our two feet, watch this now, understanding that we're riding the ship that Jesus has put us on. And ships, watch this, always ride on top of the waves instead of underneath the waves. Yeah, there may be a storm beneath us. Yes, there may be waters coming down above us. But in the midst of that, we're worshiping in the midst of that. We're worshiping in the midst of that. We're raising holy hands in the midst of that. We're singing loud voices of praise in the midst of that. We're telling God, thank you. Why? I'm not underneath the sea. I'm not in the midst of the rain. No, God, I'm in your hands. All hail the power of Jesus' name. I'm done. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem. That's a crown. And crown him Lord of all. Church, as we move forward, we got to learn how to worship. 
We've got to learn how to sing his praise even in a strange land because God is faithful. Every head about every eye closed. Father, we thank you and praise you again for this day. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Father, we thank you for all that our ears have, have heard, our eyes have seen, our hearts have felt. Father, help us to be like Nehemiah, like Hananiah and Hananiah. Help us, God, to be men and women, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters who follow you faithfully in spirit and in truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and we say thank you, God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you're here this morning, you're watching online, listen, we'd be so honored to introduce you to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know Christ as Savior, we want you to know that the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages are the payment of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Bible says that God demonstrate, he demonstrates and demonstrated his love for us in that while we were still in sin, Christ on a cross, he died for us. The Bible says if we will confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, if we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. As one of my preaching heroes, Dr. Cesar Clark said, one of God's shells is stronger than all of man's wills. <laughs> I can say, I will do this, I will do that, and God says, shall. <laughs> Listen, if you believe and confess, you shall be saved. Notice I did not say you have to join a denomination. Notice I did not say you have to be a certain color or a certain culture or come from a certain country or a certain continent. You just have to know Christ in the palm of your sins. What does that look like? It looks like this, Lord Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. Jesus, I believe that you're the Savior of the world. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I'm asking you and inviting you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Not just Savior, but my Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you made that decision, would you contact us all the ways that you know to do it? You can call us, 835-6320, uh, area code 480-835-6320. 830 you can email us, we are the word church at gmail.com. You can contact us on social media, Facebook. Uh, contact us on our church website, we are the word church.com. We'd love to connect with you. God bless you. Before I do the benediction, let me remind you of a couple of things that are coming up. Number one, saints, please remember the third and fourth Sunday of this month, September 2020, is Pastor Appreciation Month. And so Pastor Fort uh, has foregone Pastor Anniversary or Appreciation uh, as I've done really over the life of my ministry. But this is my 30th year. Can you believe that? 3-0, 30th year. And so I'm asking all of you to join us on the third Sunday and the fourth Sunday in September we have a number of special guests that will preach at 8 and 10.30, and then 8 and 10.30. Then on Tuesday, uh, on that uh, Tuesday, the 22nd, uh, we're going to have a special time on Zoom at 5.30 p.m. Uh, ministry leaders, help me get this word out. And so we're going to be live on Zoom, 5.30 p.m. That's MST, Mountain Standard or Arizona time. And there's going to be folks on there, some friends, some uh, brothers and sisters who are pastors. We're just going to talk and hang out and share. And so you don't have to leave your home. I'm asking you to come and join and to um, participate. And then I'm asking everybody that can to give at least $30. Would you give Passport at least a dollar a year, okay? So if you think Passport has done anything that's worth a dollar a year, Clarence, <laughs> then uh, do that. Now, hopefully, Clarence, they'll think it's worth more than a than dollar a year. Y'all should see Dick and Clarence 3. He's cracking up right now. I mean, he looks like a, he, he looks special. Okay, so let me just say this. Uh, give participate because I will surely appreciate it and you'll be blessed by it. You hear great preaching, you hear great songs, and we thank God for you. Finally, listen, join us as we pray. Uh, Reverend Samuel and I and others, we're, we're praying about uh, when our church is coming back. And so we're planning to do several things that we believe are going to be exciting. Look and read this month's September monthly letter that's going to your home. In fact, uh, you should have it no later then tomorrow. That's Monday. Okay? The Lord bless and keep you. I look forward to seeing you all week long on social media. Uh, may the Lord God bless and keep you. The Lord God make his face shine upon you. May the Lord by God be gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Would you return the blessing toward me and say, Pastor Ford, the Lord give you peace. Give those you're with a hug and a kiss. 
Do this one. Thank you.